So here we are in Toman with Mr. Ron Thorne, the principal master builder from Fender. We've got uh, Mr. Jimmy Hendrix over there. <laughs> Jimmy, I'm gonna move over. <laughs> and a couple Jimmy of guitars. So, what's behind uh, 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 one of this creature, the master builder of the, from the custom shop? This is a nice. This looks like a uh, probably a '65. This is a team built. Yeah, limited edition. Uh, it looks like a '65 with that logo. Uh, a nice white or obviously faded Olympic white. Yeah, it looks like Olympic white uh, with a three mint, uh, a three ply mint guard. This is a gorgeous fretboard on that too. Nice and dark. Seven millimeter pearl dots. And this is a team built. This isn't a master built, and it plays great. I've been playing it all weekend. This is uh, this is a gorgeous, well done, great looking relic. Very authentic, tasty. What's the difference between a, a, a normal Fender and a custom shop one? Well, uh, wood selection. Uh, fit and finish, the, the time spent on the fret work, the nut work, rolling the edges, a little more care has been taken into the setup, the completion, the sanding, and then of course the relic work. The relic work is only available through the custom shop guitars. None of the USA production guitars have this. So it's just you know, a slightly higher grade of fit and finish. Wood selection, depending on what you want. Uh, a lot of times we use the figured woods um, hand selected sp specifically for the customer. Oftentimes the pickups are, are hand wound. Uh, I think all the custom shop is hand wound and all the master builds are hand wound by one lady, Josefina. She hand winds all the pickups for the master built guitars. These would still be hand wound versus the production, the USA production are machine wound. Same specs, it's just a machine is moving the the bobbin back and forth as opposed to hand winding you're feeding the wire with a scatter wind on the bobbin so it's more like a luthery uh, process yeah handmade process more than exactly and a little more time is spent on it a little more attention to detail more than anything it, it and really it's it's not a, a huge dramatic difference i played some squires downstairs the other day I ran the rack of squires and was asked to select one and I picked up an affinity and it played amazing and it's hundred and forty dollars I believe was what they're telling me I couldn't believe how well it worked how well it was set up for a budget instrument but you know, it's uh, I think it just stands for the quality that we can produce at any level so this is like Leo Fender was used to do guitars or something like that it's more similar. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the, the the personnel in the custom shop, a lot of them have been there for decades, and they've moved up. They they started in as a just a body sander, and 15 years later, now they're hand shaping the necks in the custom shop. And so they've advanced their skill level over their career to the point where once you become a worker in the custom shop, you're really at the top tier of almost any guitar maker out there. They've so much experience and it shows and they're so good at what they do. The gentleman that shaped this neck, he's amazing. I love watching him. He, he, he'll go up to the sander and he'll, he'll shape it, he'll feel it, he has contour gauges he checks it with. He is so spot on and accurate. He can feel when it just needs maybe five thousandths off more. Man, and he's got it dialed in. I love watching him because he's so good at it. Me, I'd be with a spoke shave, sand checking it. Mm -hmm. He's probably done more in two months than I have in my entire life, but he, it, it's just a treat to watch him work. Really, any of the guys in the shop are, are quite talented. And all, all the master built guitars um, are one of a kind, right? Or something like that, very short runs. Uh, either short runs or one of a kind specifically for an individual. If they bordered it with a, a custom neck carve or they want a different radius, a different color, different configuration that we don't offer on the regular team belts, that's 
that's mainly what the master boats are. Either wood selection or something very specific, specific. about. So it's the customer who decide the model he wants. To or you decide to some specific guitar you want to recreate. For the trade shows, like the NAMM show, or we have some dealer events, hmm. we get to create our yeah. own. And that's, that's very fun. That's rewarding. Uh, do whatever we want, essentially, as long as it's a Fender. So we'll, some really strange pickup configurations or colors. Hmm. We all have a little stash of woods that we've hoarded over the years, and we may select from that a very special top or really nice figured maple neck, we may have that set aside specifically for a one-off for the trade show. Uh, this year in, in, in Winter Nam uh, 2019, uh, it looked like Fender, Gibson and, and also the, the Luthier area were bigger than ever. Mm. So is the Luthier thing is coming back? I think so. <laughs> I, th I think of the number of guitars that are produced every day. I'm going to estimate 20,000 guitars are built every day between Fender and Gibson and Ibanez and maybe even more. But the fact that there's that many kids, and not even kids, there's that many people picking up guitars and purchasing them every day, that's reassuring as a builder that it's still a very popular thing to do, a very popular item to own and uh, it's good that there's still an industry out there supporting us all the builders the large manufacturers whomever it's it's reassuring that it's still alive and well the guitar yeah. two more questions yeah uh, first one we've got mr. Hendrix here so in your opinion who's the Hendrix right now <laughs> living and, and, and playing oh. who's the new Hendrix that. Or a nice and cool guitarist we, sh we should Eric listen. Gales, he's, yeah. I think he's great. Uh, and the lefty, that, 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 just that, lefty to be, <laughs> that just happens to be a coincidence. I love his playing. I saw him live and on uh, the 4th of July last year and it blew me away. And he did a, a, a rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. It, was, it gave me goosebumps. It was, it was so good. So I love him as, and he's really not that new, but he's just maybe not that well known. I think he's phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. And then the last question. The last question is linked to a visit that, that the guys from Tom and had in the last weeks um, of the new president and CEO from Gibson. Uh, they ask to, to James Carley, uh, they, they ask him, Strat or Tele? <laughs> It was a nice question, I think. So, we are here, and I'd like to give you this guitar. All right. This is a true, historic Gibson Les Paul, uh, and today is uh, June 10, uh, 2019, and, and Mr. Uh, Lester Polfus was born uh, 9 of June of... 19 happy birthday 15 so happy birthday uh, 104 uh, years ago so <laughs> i would like to to have your opinion about this A guitar. opinion of this yeah <laughs> gold top beautiful i love the checking it's I, i'm assuming this is done with the the razor blade technique because it's so parallel and cross grain on it that's that's a really nice touch uh and i'll look at the, the fit and finish. Usually, I'll, I'll do that first. At a lot of the details, the the binding looks looks good. Often, I've seen where the the color on the mahogany has has really been not well scraped. But this one looks this looks good. So a, a nice guitar. Yeah, it's pretty good. A little <laughs> little flat spot right there, but that's all right. <laughs> Just like the original, I'm sure. How many guitars do you have in your collection? Uh, if you have a collection. Yeah, between 40 and 50, uh -huh. somewhere in there. How many Fenders and how many Gibson and how many Gretches? And, and what's your favorite one? I mean... I My number one is an 85 Squire Strat, believe it or not. Uh -huh. it's, I've had it since 1987, so that's that's my number one. I've got two Gretches, both are Steven Stern master built. I've got a lot of Guild guitars. 
I currently don't have any Gibsons. <laughs> I, and that's just by coincidence. I had a, a, fifth, a 60 Junior for a long time, uh, a real one. Um, but right now, I have a Flying V that I built for myself, a Karina V, so that's very heavily Gibson inspired, but I could never get along with the Les Paul. Just the neck position. Although I, Peter Green's one of my favorites, yeah. I could never really, I don't know, I just felt the, you know, that seemed yeah. always a little sharp and uncomfortable, and I always felt the neck pickup was a little useless, but nothing sounds like this. I'll say that, <laughs> and it is cool. I love okay. the checking on this, this is nice. So, Ron, thank you so much. <laughs> All right. And thank you for your time, and see you in next, during I next hope so. winter time. Yes, sir. Okay. A pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Ciao.